Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Chavik Vagela. I am working as an assistant professor in CVTS department in uh, UN Meta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center, Ahmedabad. Today, uh, as a part of a continuous cardiac education, we are going to learn about the aortic wall uh, it, and its root and its anatomy. What is the physiology of the aortic wall and what is its surgical importance? So, what is the aortic root? Aortic root is uh, mainly uh, components of the five parts which includes uh, the sinotubular junction, sinus of valsalva, annulus, subaortic segment and aortic leaflet. We are going to uh, learn a few basic things regarding each of, uh, each, uh, each part of the uh, components and what is the its, uh, surgical and physiological importance. So uh, first of all we need to define the aortic, aortic root. So what uh, from where it starts and where it ends. So the aortic root uh, it starts from the sinotubular junction as you can see in the diagram. Uh, uh, sinotubular junction and uh, its root extend from the basal attachment of the aortic wall leaflet which uh, in the diagram you can see it is indicated by the green line from uh, from that green line uh, we go upward towards the sinotubular junction hold this part which includes the aortic sinus aortic annulus coronary ostia and sinotubular junction it all uh, it all compromise the aortic root so uh, what is the surgical surgical anatomy uh, aortic root is anchored between the pulmonary root anteriorly and mitral and posterior uh, posterior mitral and tricuspid wall posteriorly and it also uh, compromised by the fibrous skeleton of the heart as you can see in the diagram it is wedged between all three walls pulmonary out, uh, mitral and uh, tricuspid wall so why uh, uh, there is mainly sinotubular junction uh, we, uh, where you can indicate it by the blue line then there is a yellow line which is the anatomical ventricular arterial junction aortic junction and third line it is a virtual basal uh, echogenic ring uh, the third ring uh, third green line uh, which you can see is not actually the anatomical part but it is the lowest portion of the aortic leaflet which uh, when measuring the echo it gives rise to the aortic annulus and, and this uh, crown crown it is formed by the attachment of the similar wall leaflets now there is a difference between the anatomical and virtual virtual is uh, i uh, virtual as i have uh, told it is mainly for the echo echo uh, measurement while the anatomic uh, junction it is the part of the left ventricle and then the aortic tissue so now there is a sinus of valsalva uh, what is its important and why it is there so sinus valsalva it is mainly compromised by the uh, th there are three cusp non coronary cusp right coronary cusp and left coronary cusp non coronary cusp doesn't give rise to any of the coronary ostial opening while the right coronary cusp it uh, gives rise to right uh, rca right common uh, right coronary artery and the left uh, left coronary cusp it give rise to left main coronary artery which further then divides into left uh, anterior descending and then uh, left uh, circumflex artery uh, below this uh, leaflet there is a uh, fibrous trigon, right fibrous trigon and left uh, fibrous trigon. Fibrous trigon uh, along with the membranous septum it gives rise to central fibrous body which, which is the very important part where because where it lies the AV node from where the bundle, bundle of the his passes. Then there is between the non coronary cusp and the left coronary cusp there is a automital curtain below which there will be a part of a mitral wall. So here it is the actual diagram, a yellow, yellow line which uh, defines the sinotubular junction, lowest portion which is uh, seen is a virtual uh, aortic annulus and then there is a automatical cutting. So what is the function of the aortic root? Uh, it, uh, during the early systole, uh, then there is a late systole and there is a diastole. During the early systole, valves open up and then during diastole, it uh, closes. So as you can see the aortic root is not uh, uniform like uh, it is not uh, a tubular or uh, circular as such. It is dilated in the aortic annulus part. Why it is that? Because there is a more collagen at the base then uh, as we go upward there is a progressive increase in the elastic lamellas. So when pressurized the sinotubular junction is larger than that of the annulus which is 1 jam 1 is to 3 ratio of the diameter. While when this is not under the pressure, the annulus is larger than the sinotubular junction. So, uh, what is the role of the sinus of valsalva? It it uh, uh, it plays a, plays an important role in the closure of the aortic wall. 
aortic sinus uh, have no effect on the wall competence but there are imp they are important in reducing the mechanical mechanical stress on the aortic cusp during the cardiac cycle by creating the eddies current between the cusp and the sinus wall so uh, also the sinus of wall why it is uh, circular in shape because it uh, gives rise to more more surface area as you can see uh, force is equal to pressure into area if there is a square then the area will be less as uh, if uh, we look into the circular area there is pressure will be more and the area will be more more so there will be more more stress as you can see in the circular there is a less uh, surface tension is less now the subaortic segment uh, here is the av node as we have described between the non coronary cusp and right coronary cusp there is a membrane septum and the right fibrous tegmen which, which gives rise to central fibrous body which lies the av node now there is the they are the part of aortic leaflets they have the coacting surface then there is a belly and there is a hinge and which and the last part which attaches to the annulus coacting surface is the uppermost portion of the coaction which is mainly important for the aortic wall competence so there are the different properties of the wall leaflets then uh, from starting from the bottom there is a ventricularis part of the left ventricle then there is a spongiosa there is a fibrosa and there is a cusp free edge and then there is a hinge fibrous core uh, which is covered by the fibroelastic layer on the arterial and the ventricular side as we have described there is a less elastin than the ascending aorta but it is though it is elastic then there is a loose uh, a gelatinous layer the spongiosa is which is sandwiched between the two fibrous layer why it is that because it permits the folding and the unfolding fibrosa layer which is uh, mainly responsible for the tensile strength uh, which is a circumferentially oriented collagen then there is a spongiosa which is uh, which is a flexible and uh, uh, it contains a loose connective tissue and then there is a shearing the ventricularis which are uh, responsible for preload now there are the different kinds of uh, variants it can be either unicuspid it can be bicuspid can be tricuspid quadricuspid uh, quadricuspid or pentacuspid then the, uh, there is a range of morphology either uh, there is a right coronary cusp is bigger than the left coronary cusp or different different uh, modalities uh, different different uh, modalities there may be as you can see in the first diagram there is a, all the cusps are equal and the commissures are equal then there is unequal cusp and the equal commissures then on the third there is unequal commissure as well as un uh, unequal cusp so now there are the different kind of aortic wall disease it can be other uh, age related decalcific uh, uh, aortic wall either it can be rheumatic isolated aortic wall uh, rheumatic lesion is very very rare then then uh, there may be a congenital uh, aortic wall disease so stenosis which is the most prevalent aortic wall disease uh, 2% of the person uh, seen in, the, uh, in more, more than 65 year of the age it is seen then there is a recurrent lesion uh, which is a 5% 5 per 10000 person per year then there is a along with uh, aortic wall disease there may be a dilatic aortic root uh, which affect uh, the 3 per uh, 10000 person per year so these are the different functional classification of aortic wall aortic uh, incapinous type 1 which is further divided into type 1 a 1 b 1 c 1 d then there is a type 2 and there is a type 3 all the uh, types have a different uh, morphology and associated with more or less uh, aortic wall regurgitation regurgitation and each part is uh, differently uh, treated surgically sometimes uh, it all uh, only need the annuloplasty sometimes if there is a uh, cusp perforation then it may be repaired directly or with the pericardial patch so most common now uh, as we have discussed there is a uh, uh, age related aortic wall calcification then there may be a rheumatic aortic wall calcification and there is a congenital congenital uh, most common congenital anomaly is bicuspid aortic wall 0.9 to 2% prevalence is there uh, 3 to 6 million us citizen are affected and males are affected more uh, than the female like a 4 into 1 ratio uh, it, is, it is a genetic disease uh, genes which are involved it, it is the noch1 and acta2 now uh, why we need to learn about the bicuspid aortic wall because it is uh, associated with more complication over the period of time uh, most common it is uh, 50% of the cases in the adult uh, person it is associated with aortic wall stenosis 
and a dilatation bicuspid aortic wall is generally not associated with the dilatation of the aorta when there is a bicuspid aortic wall it is more responsible for more morbidity and mortality than all other congenital disorder combined it can be either a stenotic can be a recursion or can be a both and then there is may be associated with aortic root dilatation and dissection uh, here you can see the bicuspid aortic wall which is differ from the tricuspid aortic wall why because there is a area uh, is surface area the opening area is less in case of bicuspid one then in tricuspid one there is a more area this is the opening of the wall it is the two cusp as you can see that if there is when there is a two cusp the aortic opening area is relatively smaller and when there is a three cusp the uh, aortic area opening area is uh, relatively larger as uh, as there is a diagram which is equal to circumference is equal to 2 pi r as you can see in the two when there is a two aortic wall cusp there is a uh, radius is less 2 r 4 r and when there is a tricuspid the area is 6 r so the circumference will be more so there is another classification surgical classification severs classification of bicuspid aortic wall it can be a type 0 type 1 type 2 depending on the rafe and if there may, it may be there is a no rafe there is a one rafe or there is a two rafe bicuspid uh, aortic wall stenosis is associated with anomaly so bicuspid aortic wall is of there is a miller classification bicuspid aortic wall aortopathy Uh, in 30% of the cases aortic root is involved in 40% there may be a tubular aorta in 28% cases tubular aorta or uh, involves the arch and in 45% cases it is diffuse generalized uh, aorta why it is more common in bi uh, bicuspid aortic wall than the tricuspid aortic wall because the uh, uh, jet from of the blood directly hits over the peripheral curvature in case of bicuspid aortic wall this is a wall stress differs by the fusion pattern this is also a wall stress differs by the fusion pattern in case of right anterior wall of the ascending aorta here there is a direct jet over the right anterior wall of the ascending aorta so there will be a larger uh, anterior part and there uh, when like this it will be associated with more of a arch area so aortic wall uh, this is the mainly the superficial portion which we have covered aortic uh, sinotubular junction aortic uh, wall leaflets sub uh, aortic segment and the uh, and uh, bicuspid aortic wall uh, further we also we can uh, go into the coronary ostia what is the importance of the coronary ostia while uh, while we are repressing the aortic wall which uh, which structure we need to identify and while taking the stu uh, sutures uh, we should be careful over which area so along with uh, along with it either patient might need aortic wall replacement if associated with aortic dilated aortic wall we may need ascending aorta replacement or whole of the uh, aortic wall plus root plus ascending aorta which may uh, we call the bental surgery so this is all over uh, superficial regarding the aortic wall and its leaflet thank you